half in the bag. I'm so sick of everything inside of a movie theater. Oh, how much more of this is there? Oh, I'm so full. What do you mean, how much more? I have four more cakes in the fridge. Do I have to eat it all? Well, yes, you have to eat them all. I bought them so you could tell me which cake you like the best. Then I know which cake to order for the fucking wedding. Wedding? What wedding? Look, just shut the fuck up and keep eating the cake. Oh. I'm trying to read this classic American novel. Oh, is that one by Hemingway? Uh, close. Michael Jan Friedman. Oh, I loved him on Airwolf. Look, I have a renewed interest in literature, okay? This is a story about when the X-Men met Star Trek The Next Generation, and it's called Planet X, okay? So if you could just shut the fuck up and keep eating your cake. Mike, Mike, did you hear the big news? Oh my God, you're pregnant? Yeah, but bigger than that. Oh my God, um, there was a celebrity divorce? Bigger! Bigger than that! Um, a major or minor celebrity has died, either expectedly or unexpectedly? Probably, but just let me tell you the news! Okay! DC has made a film that apparently isn't terrible! What? Oh my! <laughs> Jesus Christ! How could that be true? What movie is it? Wonder Woman! What? Come on, let's go see it! Oh my god! Fuck it! Let's go see this movie! It's gonna be wonderful! What is this place? Who are you people? We are the bridge to a greater understanding. Right. Feminism, stereotypes, political awareness, misandry, misogyny, feminazi, proto-feminism, mansplaining, heteronarrative, empowering feminist topicality. These are terms we can now associate with a fun superhero movie today. Thanks, world. Why, it's Wonder Woman. Finally, in this hopeless age of Trump, little girls have someone they can look up to. Forget their own mothers, physicist Marie Curie, Mae Jemison, Harriet Tubman, Margaret Thatcher, Rosa Parks, Susan B. Anthony, Hillary Clinton, and even fucking Cleopatra. Finally, little girls and grown women all over the world can look up to a fictional Amazon princess with a magic whip who stars in a movie no one will remember in two weeks. Well, with all that out of the way now, Jay, why don't you tell me what you thought of Wonder Woman? It was pretty good. I thought the same thing. It was pretty good. Yeah. But in all seriousness, uh, it's unfortunate that there's so much bullshit kind of surrounding this movie now, because I think it might turn a lot of people off from seeing it, almost on principle. Like, ah, fuck that movie. It's, it's been completely politicized. Um, you know, no matter how you feel about it, I think it might turn some people off, which is unfortunate because it's a really entertaining movie. I liked it a lot, I, and, and, but I didn't love it, and I thought it was very uneven, and I think this is the, really the first movie I kind of like delved into the critical responses and sort of like what people were thinking before it came out, okay. and I, I just kind of like, for some reason, just became immersed in that and fascinated by it because I think one, it it's was... It's like a snowball effect that just keeps building. Yeah, it was largely set up by the Ghostbusters movie from last year because right. there was that, there's a new image of, I think it's like a, like a really tall billboard advertisement for Justice League and it has a picture of the Flash and mainly it's focused on Wonder Woman. And there's a little tiny girl in the bottom of the frame like looking up at the Wonder Woman. Oh, sure. That's kind of what got me going with the the whole Ghostbusters thing, because there's that other image with the little girl talking to Kristen Wiig. Yeah. It's like, finally, little girls have someone to look up to. And I think there's a little bit of confusion um, <laughs> between uh, what is a role model and, and what is entertainment. Um, anyone over the age of six 
should not be looking up to uh, Wonder Woman. Maybe. Well, I don't know, Mike, as an Amazonian princess myself, I, I, I'm glad that I finally have someone in film to represent me. Being, being a, a partial deity with superpowers and a magic whip is, is you know, inspiring. I mean, the, they should more so be looking up to the director, Patty yeah. Jenkins. Yeah. Um, and, and I think people are probably going to say, like, well, that's kind of what we mean by it. But, um, you know, uh, she's done a good job making a, a really good superhero movie, better than Zack Snyder. <laughs> she, I think what we've learned is that if you want to make a good DC movie, get Zack Snyder as involved as, as little as possible. Yeah. Zack Snyder, I just don't like his films. Patty Jenkins, I, I, I haven't seen Monster, unfortunately, but I mean, I, I know it's a, it's good, a good movie. movie yeah. So I, as far as her direction and being a filmmaker, I think she's a better filmmaker than Zack Snyder. Yeah. And it's like the, all this like stuff about the, finally it's the first thing that little girls and women can look up to is just strange. It's strange to me. And it feels like a marketing tactic. It, well, this feels more like it's a, a viral marketing, like not maybe necessarily the studio behind it. I don't know. Like it's it's right. more like other people that kind of are are, are putting their sort of yeah. uh, agenda attaching it to this movie, yeah. uh, as opposed to Ghostbusters, which you had Paul Feig was constantly like, "Women have never been funny before," and you're like, "Fuck you, Paul Feig." Yeah. <laughs> it's also become a, a quasi equality issue. In the tiny, tiny world of superhero movies, it's become an equality issue. Where it's well, like, it's bigger than that, in that comic book movies are like the biggest movies right now. It's not a tiny, tiny niche. Well, it, you're, you're right, but um, the genre is. And it's like, so it's like, okay, well, we haven't had a female superhero movie, except for Catwoman, Elektra, and a couple other ones that flopped. Because They've all mainly, been pretty shitty. Maybe because the characters are terrible, or maybe the movies were bad too, I don't know. Catwoman was awful. Yeah, that's just kind of a legendary flop. Yes. But, um, and so they're like, well, all these, you know, the Avengers and, and all that, all don't, we, we haven't had a single female superhero movie. And so it becomes some kind of like strange equality issue, like equality in, in, in the workplace. Yeah. And if you look back, comic book movies come from comic books, which are, and I'm just going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to get wild. And I'm going to say that maybe little boys probably read superhero comics more than little girls. And uh, I mean, the, the origin- Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Just not to say that no women have ever liked comic movies, no little girls don't like comic books. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, and, and a lot of it has to do with um, uh, marketability and, and profitability too. Wonder Woman is a good, good comic book because I would say Wonder Woman is probably the most famous female superhero. Oh yeah, she's, I mean that's, when it comes to DC, it's Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Yeah. And, Just in and as far as people talk about representation, like she's had, how many Batman movies have we had? You know, how many Superman, and there's been like no, there's never been a Wonder Woman movie. Um, yeah. There was a, a crappy low budget TV show in the 70s and that's kind of it, aside from some cartoons, I think. And again, that's probably because uh, playing to your audience. Well, studios, yeah, they look at box office numbers, they look at past comic book movies like Catwoman, mm -hmm. uh, and they're not looking at whether the movie is good or not, they're looking at how much it made, and they're going down to the bottom line, and that's kind of what decides these things. But Wonder Woman has its origins in, in feminism. A guy invented her, um, but it was his wife who said, you better make it a lady. Oh, really? And then I think I, I, think I read that he modeled the, the look of Wonder Woman either after his wife or after another woman who he was in a polyamorous relationship with. Oh, that's very interesting. But he was also a psychologist and he's the guy who invented the polygraph test. The guy who created Wonder Woman? Yeah. That's very interesting. And I think that's connected to the lasso of truth. Oh. Because it's a polygraph, it's a thing that measures your blood pressure and tells if you're lying or not. Yeah. Um, I don't know why he created the superhero, but I guess she was created in 1941 and then He's like, this is how women should be, like, like uh, Amazonian warriors, and they should rule the world because they're smarter and whatever. And then, um, and then I think he died like a couple of years later, 
and then the character kind of vanished until like the 1970s. Hmm. She was like like cooking, cleaning in the house, like <laughs> in, in cartoons and stuff. From huh. from what I remember reading. Okay. And then she like reappeared in the 70s and I was like, hey, she's back because that was like the, the rise of rise feminism, of feminism yeah. in the 70s. Oh. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that the movie coupled with the history of Wonder Woman being a feminist icon, sure, um, it kind of is infused into the movie. Whether or not the movie has that much to do with feminism, it, it really doesn't too much. No, no, I, and that's, I think that's why this movie's kind of a win-win for everybody. If you just want to see a fun, entertaining action movie, it's entertaining. Um, if you're really into comic book movies, it's a good comic book movie, it's a good origin movie. Um, and if that's the kind of thing that you're looking for, the, the whole sort of feminist angle and like, a big, popular, successful movie. It doesn't suck. It's not a Catwoman. There's a little too much of the uh, the speed ramping stuff. That's There's very Zack Snydery. Yeah. I don't even think Zack Snyder does that anymore, though. So it it's feels a almost dated. Like it's dated. So it was weird to see it show back up in this movie. Yeah. And that's, that's actually, I would say that the action is the weakest aspect of this movie. It's very good from like like Chris Pine and Gal Gadot. We've ridiculed her before. She was. Terrible in Batman v Superman. The, what's worse is they're making a Wonder Woman movie. Just terrible. I don't want to watch a feature with her. Wonder Woman. She's pretty good in this. She's okay. I think it's a case of uh, like a good director can get a good performance out of Adam Sandler. Yeah. Like like look at like Punch Drunk Love, and I think she's used appropriately in this, where her kind of acting limitations work well because she's like a fish out of water, um, there's that aspect to it, and she's kind of like seeing the world for the first time. I think it works really well. Yeah, the, the, I mean, I thought they were gonna do more fish out of water humor. I guess they're saving that for Aquaman. Oh my God. <sighs> but um, <laughs> yeah, uh, she uh, has that kind of like, uh, what's going on, face? And that's good. That works for the I'd, character. I in the in the future scenes, or her as a member of the Justice League. I'm not sure I can buy her like kind of dopey performance. Yeah. Um, and and her emoting wasn't very good. Uh, that that didn't really bother me. I thought she did fine. She, she was better in the comedic uh, parts of the film. Hmm. There's a part where they they go and go to the store and go shopping for clothes. Oh yeah, classic oh, yeah. fish out of water oh, yeah. fantasy yeah. stuff. Yes. And she's trying on like these these uh, Edwardian era, uh, 1918 kind of stuffy British clothes. How could a woman possibly fight in this? And then the, the movie though has still had that kind of like ugly Zack Snyder look. It was like they turned up the desaturation from Zack Snyder's movies by like 15%. Like it's a little bit better. Like I remember her costume in Batman v Superman was like yeah. brown. The right. whole thing was just brown. Yes, yes. Yeah, there's some color. Yes. And I think the, that that look is kind of more appropriate for this movie given the era it takes place in, the kind of World War One era. Like that worked for me. I think that a miserable, nightmarish movie about the horrors of World War One. It's going to be very, very appealing to 10-year-old girls. <laughs> well, this isn't that dark, though. This is actually... It's pretty fucking dark. Well, I mean, it is, but it, it, the, the, what it's per, you know showing is World War I stuff, but what the message of the movie is, or the, the kind of hope that it's trying to portray, I thought uh, was handled pretty well. And I will say, uh, this movie treats its superhero like a superhero. Mm -hmm. Unlike the Zack Snyder... This is what... Yeah. The Man of Steel should have been, you know, a movie like this. That first scene when they're in like the trenches out on the, the battlefield and, and then she, you know, throws off the cloak, puts on the thing and she's walking and she's deflecting the bullets. And it's like, this is a superhero. Like, that's that's the highlight moment of the whole movie for me. That Yeah, it, like, was, it was genuinely good. Yeah, except for um, I wanted uh, cheesy music. There was like this yeah. really like, da, 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 like trying this, to make it more like epic or epic something. Epic or, or yeah, emo I, I wanted one to woman. <laughs> like I, 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 I just wanted like. Do. I was thinking about that during the fish out of water comedy bits earlier. I was like, this could use some more whimsy in the score. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. Uh, but the idea of Wonder Woman running through like World War I battle trenches and like fighting Germans and stuff was just crazy. And I, I, I thought like that, I, I thought the movie could have 
taken itself a little less seriously. See, I think the balance worked for me. The tone worked for me. Like, if, if, as far as a contemporary comic book movie, they're like, unless you're like Sam Raimi, you're not going to go ultra corny like he did with the Spider Man movies. Um, so, I, I, I don't know. It worked for me. I think this is a better comic book movie, superhero movie than half of the Marvel movies. Those are always consistently okay. But as far as portraying a superhero yeah. with conviction that actually wants to help people, this did it so much better than so many other recent movies. Yeah, if you, if you look at it from that perspective, I agree. Um, it was a legit movie about a superhero, which we always like, we always complain that these other movies aren't. Right. They're always just like, we gotta stop the blue laser and we gotta fight amongst each other. Yeah. And I don't know. Helping people never seems to be like a priority. Yeah. You look at like Batman v Superman when Superman's actually helping people and he looks like he wants to slit his wrists. Yeah, and then there was that part in that. Well, there was an Avengers movie where a whole city was flying up in the sky. That's the Age of Ultron. Was that the Ultron one? And there's like a little moment in there where Captain America's like, help these people out of this car before it falls off a cliff. Yeah. Uh, okay. And it always felt kind of shoehorned in. Like it was getting you in the way you have of, to, yeah. of the big battle. Yeah, this one, I mean, the whole movie is about her helping people yeah. and also about her because um, she comes from the Amazonian woman, Wonder Woman world, whatever that's called. Uh, and her kind of view of the world is very black and white. Like, she's good and she fights the bad people. And about her kind of learning that there's more the, the, there's more going on. There's more gray areas. The, and I, I liked all that stuff. It becomes convoluted, um, as does the plot. So let's get in spoilers. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Um. Yes, when you say superhero movie, everything felt like a superhero movie up until the end. When it when the message of the movie is, eh, <laughs> it's not. It's not. You save the fucking day. Yeah. It's. And you fight for what you believe in and, and believe in love. You, yeah, you, what you fight for and believe in and what you love will all go to shit in the end and mean nothing. <laughs> is, what, is what the message of the movie was. Uh, you know, because Lil fight, Am fight for good by violently stabbing a sword through the guy that you don't agree with yes. was sort of weird. Well, yeah, she thought she, she thought, thought he was, and he was genuinely bad. They had the scene right before it, right, the fi uh, fifteen seconds before she killed him, where he launches a, a mustard gas bomb into a, a, a town of filled with civilians. Yeah. Oh no, her motivation is fine, but just like seeing it portrayed so sort of bluntly, yeah, <laughs> and so violently, it was a little weird. That, that, yeah, that was a little strange, but um, she wants to save people. She's a little naive. I'm gonna leave my magical island. I'm, I'm gonna kill Ares, and then that will just cure the whole world of war. And then she thinks, um, uh, what's his face? Who's that actor? Danny Houston is, uh, is it, that's the actor? I don't know. Oh, that's the actor. Okay. Um, he is, she thinks he's the embodiment of Ares, the, the god of war. And, How uh, early into the movie did you know exactly what was going to happen? Well, I didn't expect it to be the crusty old British man. You didn't? No. The moment I saw him, it's like they wrote him in so that could be the reveal that he's the bad guy. I saw it coming a mile away. Well, I, 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 I expected him to, like, they were doing this thing where she's walking around a room that he's in, and I expected the camera to kind of go past him and then him to, like, change form mm. into something else. But he's literally the crusty British guy with the mustache, <laughs> even in the flashback. Yeah, yeah. It's very strange. <laughs> um, well, it's helped when they put the CGI uh, hell armor on him. It yeah. makes him look a little more intimidating. The, the, the weird Amazonian god <laughs> somehow looks like like the Duke of Eddington. <laughs> uh, I happen to blend in perfectly with British Parliament. <laughs> uh, what? 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 Whoop. Um, so I expected him to change forms, you know, to something like different or sure. evil, and, but he was just that guy. Just that guy. Um, and then his master plan as the god of war was to like be a ghost and kind of whisper like, hey, do this bad shit yeah. into people's ears. And then um, once, once he's dead or gone, people still do bad shit. And, and Chris Pine tells her, like, people are still kind of, eh. So how is uh, Wonder Woman with a, a literal sword going to stop 
the evil in hearts of men. She's going to try. She's I gonna. think that's the message of the movie is that, you know, you can't save everybody, but you do your best. Okay. The flowery message of love and hope. Yeah. Which, you know what? At least this had that. This isn't a depressing Zack Snyder nightmare. I'm, I'm this, all this, right with This that. was a, a superhero movie in a very classic sense, and I was fine with that. But what happened at the end with the electricity? Oh, yeah. that's The, the movie falls a bit off at the end into CGI nightmare, um, which a lot of these movies do. Uh, it's rained in a little bit because it's just kind of, it's not like a whole city is being destroyed. It's just sort of this airfield. So I was okay with that. And also it has the Chris Pine stuff that connects her to humanity. So there's a little bit of that going on. Um, so it's not as bad as a lot of the endings to these movies are as far as just like CGI shit flying everywhere. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. But... Well, you can't end a movie without that now. And I think this movie did what it could to, to rein it in. Welcome to jolly old London. It's hideous. Yeah, it's not for everybody. When she first gets to London and it's all gray and rainy and dirty. I just wish the movie wasn't so drab visually. I still wish, wish they turn that giant contrast knob <laughs> to colorful. I don't think they ever will with these, it's too, uh, it's too entrenched in Zack Snyder verse yeah. to, to really, I mean, this movie feels more like a Marvel movie right down to the villain being somewhat uninteresting. Yeah. Um, so at least they, they added some levity and they got it away from dreary, miserable tone. Now it's just the images that are kind of dark. I guess what I'm saying, Jay, is I miss the colorful, campy elements in my DC movie, <laughs> which I know are oil and water. Patty Jenkins stirred it up a little, but it's still kind of floating around, not quite mixing together properly. Mm. Everyone kept saying, Gal Gadot is the new Christopher Reeve. No. <laughs> I think she's a very good Wonder Woman. Oh, she's just fighting faceless German soldiers. <laughs> they weren't Nazis. No, no, not yet. That'll be in the sequel when they do World War II. And World War I was just a big muddled mess and everyone was fighting each other. Well, that's what they say that in the movie. I was waiting actually early on when they have, when Chris Pine lands in Amazon world and they've got him tied up with the truth rope or whatever. And he mentions the war and they're like, what war? What are you talking about? I don't know why, but I was waiting for him to say World War One. Oh, yes. Even though he wouldn't say that, but. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I actually was waiting for that too. <laughs> because as we all know, they didn't call World War I World War I, <laughs> as in they were expecting more. Right. Although they weren't planning for sequels the way that DC does. Yes, yes. they didn't have World War II. They didn't have the, the World IMD. War Cinematic Universe yes. planned out yet. Right, right. They're more clearly defined bad guys in World War II. I, I think they were probably trying to avoid the Captain America comparisons. True. Because uh, this movie felt a lot like Captain America already. Yeah. 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 When they were planning this out, they were probably like, fuck. Can't we just ever kill a bunch of Nazis? Damn it. Because when she's killing those German guys, and you're just like, that's just some guy. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. The boys in the trenches called her Dr. Poison. It was interesting that they had a, a like a female villain. They're, they're, this film was actually pre pretty progressive. Well, and everybody was they're used bad. well. Yeah. It wasn't like, a, like that's kind of the moment. I like that scene when they're all around the campfire mm. and everybody's kind of, I think they're sleeping at that point and Wonder Woman's talking to the, the, the Native American guy. And he's like, well, our land was taken by him. And he points to Chris Pine. He's like, ah, she's starting to get that there's gray areas and the world's yes. not so black and white. Yes. Everybody's shitty. Everybody's shitty. That's the message of Wonder Woman. Yes, everybody's shitty. Yes. And that's the message of uh, the social media surrounding Wonder Woman. Yes, so everybody's shitty. <laughs> everyone sucks and everyone complains and everyone hates everybody else. It's kind of ironic, actually, that she's supposed to be this figure of hope and then everything surrounding this movie is just like like endless headaches. It's just everybody yelling at each other. That's the, yeah, it's a, it's, it operates on many levels. The, the the World War One is 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 just a uh, it's just a metaphor for the internet. <laughs> and that's the great thing about what a superhero movie can be: thrilling, fun, exciting, and bring out the best in you. Um, ironically, I would say little girls should stay away from this film. <laughs> Do you think it's too violent with uh, the war stuff? 
that's the only down downside to this is I, I just have this like I have I have a Batman v Superman ending in my head. Yeah. It's that ending on the, the, the airport tarmac area with the, blah, blah, and it reminds me of when they fought Doomsday yeah. at the end of Batman versus Superman, when they were on some kind of like nondescript place with like rubble everywhere and there's just like blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And that's the way this movie ends and I wish it didn't. I wished it end like some other way. Everything leading up to that is pretty good. Some other way that tied her origin and her like motivation back. Mm -hmm. And it kind of did because she literally defeats the bad guy with love and hopefulness. Yeah. She's like, I have love and hopefulness. And, and then she, and he's like, ah, I'm throwing shit at you. And it's like bouncing off her. And she's like, I'm defeating you with love. Positivity. Yeah. And and so I guess it kind of did, but I, I still have that like. Bleh. It's more the visuals. Yeah. They it's just the get visuals, so yeah. ugly and, and overbearing. I mean, if your real goal is to inspire little girls and young women to have a message of hope, like the Wonder Woman should have just been like like a girl in college who's a Wonder Woman and who fights off like bullies. What you're talking about is the Supergirl movie. Yes, or this is the current <laughs> Supergirl TV show. I think this is a little too DC, model, muck, darkness, lightning, debris, fire, and brimstone. It's, so is it, are you mainly just talking about the ending? Because that's the only part that really feels like the Zack last, snyder -y. The last hour. Okay. After, like I said Everything before, after the trenches and after the, the trenches, stuff. Yeah. After uh. that, it should have been like... Uh, Wonder Woman goes around London and, and is, is on the front pages of all the newspapers. She saved the day at the, in the trenches of the World War I. Da, da, you know. And then the bad guy shows up and, she, and Wonder Woman is like, like giving speeches and going, positivity, positivity. And, you know, and, like, and then it becomes like Christopher Reeve super, Superman. But instead, they just go deeper into the, into the, into the muck. You're gonna get the mustard gas, monster bombs in the <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that that yeah. battle, when she runs across the field and saves the day, I would have been happy if that was like kind of the big ending. Mm. And then, um, then like you have some kind of showdown with, with Ares of some kind. Where? Well, what you're talking about is what we always complain about, though, which is you have the, the first half of the movie is the origin story, and then the second half is like, and then these other things happen, and then they fight a villain. No, but, the, but Wonder Woman, like, uh, should have, like, again, if the message of Wonder Woman is her character, her superhero arc is, I'm, I'm naive, and I'm going out in the world, and I'm, I just bring this message of positivity and hope, and mankind is bad, and we, I gotta stop wars. That's a real goal. Yeah. Ares is causing wars. I'm gonna stop that because innocent people are dying. That was a real goal. Um, she should have then kind of like done something else. Mm. Really, it's Chris Pine who saves the day because he blows up the plane filled with mustard gas. Sure. She kind of stops Ares, uh, who really wasn't the cause of wars at, at all anyways. He was just whispering things. Because mankind is still Mankind is still shitty. Yeah. So really she didn't do much. And she wasn't that well known. She wasn't like, hey, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Wonder Woman. It wasn't that. Yeah. She's just eh, blowing things up on the tarmac. That's what it ended up being. Yeah. Hey, I, I'm saying, you're on course. <laughs> so it's mainly just the ending you have issues with. I think just, that kind of I just, spoils it a bit for you. Yeah. Just See, I, I had problems with the ending. It didn't spoil the whole movie for me, mainly because it still has that kind of emotional connection with Wonder Woman and the Chris Pine character. That, yeah. that sort of carries it through all the CGI lightning yeah, and rubble. I guess. I guess. It, it left me with a mildly bad taste, but. Overall, it was, it was the best DC movie. So now do we call DC fans Marvel fanboys, since DC essentially sold out to change their format to be more like Marvel's? 
I think we should just be happy that the movie wasn't fucking terrible. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. It wasn't like a nightmare world. Like right, previous, right. Like we have Justice matter. League to look forward to for that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think Mr. Plinkett's dead. <sighs> he died face down in a pie, just like Dom DeLuise. Well, at least he died doing what he loves, eating. <sighs> yeah, the cake's not bad either. I know, it's good. Nope, not dead yet. Oh. Hey, hey you. Yeah? No, not the fat, ugly, jewy looking one. You. Who, me? Yeah, yeah, I used to be kind of like fat and frumpy, right? Like some kind of hobbit. I guess? You know, you've really cleaned yourself up. You lost some weight. You got that perfectly trimmed beard and coiffed hair. You're, you're quite the handsome man. <sighs> My wife, she died over 60 years ago. I, I never really thought I'd move on, but... You know, I'm, I'm thinking I might give the whole gay thing a try. Yeah, yeah, I think I want to become a gay. Why are you telling me this? You know, I had sex with a man once. It was, it was in prison. It wasn't consensual, but I think I liked it. Why are... My point is, I'd like to go on a date with you tonight. Um, sure. I'll need to get cleaned up first, though. Yeah, I'll go change. All right.